Rare film footage is the focus of this new series that will show aspects of World War II that go against the grain of the Good War narrative. In fact, it's been suggested that some of the material should be destroyed. That I find frankly outrageous. History, like all the sciences, must be open to the addition of good data points and devoid of political correctness in order to get as complete an understanding as possible. Here in part one, we'll see one reel of six documenting a cultural visit to Germany of a group of British intellectuals in 1934. In other videos from the series, we'll see footage of corporations that were willing to do business in Nazi Germany and fascist organizations that were active in the Allied Nations. This material is historically important. Come and see. Here we go on July the 7th. You remember that glorious summer morning, don't you? When the Karl Schultz tour began and we found ourselves on board the North Liner Bremen, getting ready to land at Bremerhaven. For tender goodbyes have been said, Recalling the biblical example of Noah, we leave our good ship one by one. Resigned to our fate and with our luggage heaven knows where, we prepare to meet the customs. That ordeal over, we board the special bound for Bremen and our train slowly draws out of the station. A last look at the huge liner, switches click, we gather speed, the car shorts tour has begun. The miles slip by and we arrive at the city of Bremen. Here we are welcomed by the Bremen branch of the Vereinigung Karl Schurz, President Director Stadtländer of the North German Lloyd. In front of the town hall of this thousand-year-old Hanseatic town stands the statue of Roland dating from 1404, a symbol of Bremen. The hall itself is a magnificent specimen of Gothic brick architecture with a Renaissance facade. We enter. The sunlight filters through the colored windows and the Senate of Bremen greets us amid a setting breathing of a great tradition. Models of famous galleons hang from the ceiling and here we are reluctantly passing into the street again. Over the market square we cross into the newly constructed Böttjerstrasse. Beneath the colonnades, we see the workshops of the guilds and view an old storehouse, close to which is suspended an ancient trader's sign. Put Meissner porcelain, suspended high up on the wall, between two gables. Further on, we get a glimpse of the Paula Becker Mordazon house with its vivid glass and brick decorations. Leaving the Böttcherstrasse, we approach the portal with its remarkable glass window. And passing through, we later on get a first view of the Dome of Bremen or the former Archiepiscopal Cathedral of St. Peter, the foundation stone of which was laid in the 11th century. We then relax at this beautiful fountain of Teichmann where Neptune and his consorts tantalize a belated mariner. In the evening, we are at the Karl Schurz house 
which is dedicated to American-German cooperation and friendship, to the spirit of which we owe the Karl Schurz tour and our part therein. Of this spirit, Karl Schurz is a symbol. The president of the Vereinigung Karl Schurz, Dr. Irgner, together with the board of directors, welcomes us in the presence of the American ambassador, Professor Dodd, on behalf of the Vereinigung Karl Schurz, the Deutsche Akademische Austauschdienst and the America Institute, whose guests we will be in Germany for many weeks to come. We converse with many friends on the terrace, leading to the beautiful garden at the rear of the house. On the next day, we are at the Humboldt House, where General von Masso, President of the Deutsche Akademische Austauschdienst, receives us. After a happy gathering here, we board our bus to inspect the Kaiser Wilhelm Institutes in Dahlem, dedicated to scientific research. At the Institute of Biology, we all pass in close range of the camera. Every one of us is a star. Not professional, of course, but a star all the same. In the evening, at the Harnack House, we are guests of the professors of the Institute until late hours. The next day sees us at the Pergamon Museum, which is built on the Spree Island, where Berlin's most famous museums have found a peaceful location away from the noise and the tumult of the big city. In the huge entrance hall stands the town gate of Millet, a monument of Greek culture, all the more impressive, considering the relative insignificance of Millet, a small marketplace. Mr. Schantz takes his shot, perhaps a thousand by now. Further on, we see excavations from Babylon, the Ishtar Gate, and the Processional Avenue, all in glazed brick of bright coloring. The spirit of Belzatsar is among us, and our experts closely inspect the writing on the wall. And then, the altar of Pergamon, erected probably about the year 180 before Christ, it stood as a monument of the triumph of divine order over untamed barbarism. That is the theme of all its huge ornamental architecture. Outside, the monumental statue of Emperor William I. And we find ourselves touring the city. Our bus cleaves its way through the traffic and under the Brandenburger Tor on its way to Potsdam. We pass a squad of police and bowl along through the Tiergarten. Are we downhearted? I don't think so. We find that all is right with the world and have our various dispositions well in hand. A turn in the road, the signal is given to the traffic behind, and we are on the highway to the west, along which our good bus carries us to Potsdam, to the city of Frederick the Great. We approach the fountain and the terraces which lead up to the king's residence, the great monarch's favorite resort, Saint Souci. It was here that the great ruler lived, who established Prussia's claim to power amongst the other great nations of the world. We are charmed of this residential castle with its lovely rose arbors. During a walk through the park, we view a landmark proclaiming Frederick the Great's sense of justice, the historical window. From here, we repair to the landing stage in Potsdam 
on the river Hafu for a restful trip over the water in the late afternoon. These forest-bound lakes and rivers are typical of Berlin's beautiful surroundings. Hello, Mr. Schantz. At it again. The lovely scenery and the peacefulness of it all makes us amiably disposed to our comrades in arms. Strangers to one another not so many days ago, we now draw together and make friends. And we turn for home as the curfew tolls the knell of parting day.